Give me, give me the revelation that God's put in your heart for us as far as the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, God spoke to me at the end of last year. And he said, he said, I want you to write a book on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, just like you and myself, you know, the first thing people think of is the evidence of speaking in tongues, which is very relative. And it, 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 you know, it's not something that we look down on, but I'm with you. The whole purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he says, you shall be witnesses unto me, uh, unto Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So I know that uh, what most people think of Pentecost is they think of a religion. And God said, I just want people to know that Pentecost is not bound by a religion. Pentecost is an experience. Yes. An experience, encounter even, if you want to say it like that, yes. where I have allowed the Holy Spirit, what I had, it was to my, it was to our advantage rather that he leave John 16, so that he could give to us what he had, which was the promise of the father that we so talk about. And you see people like Peter, who's denying him in one chapter then he's baptizing the Holy Spirit and he's, he's healing people in the next chapter. People are getting Absolutely. saved, 3,000, which um, is an amazing, amazing thing. If you look at the Word of God, the first Pentecost that you see, 50 days after uh, Moses, the Passover, you see Moses coming off the mountain and 3,000 people trying to live according to law only. You see them and they fall. 3,000 people actually die under the law. And then mm. you look at Peter's message in Acts and you see where 3,000 people receive life because oh, now man. we're preaching under the Holy Spirit, uh, word and spirit colliding together. And you see life that's giving. You see people being added to the church daily. And God spoke to me and said, I want you to write a book. You know, I know you have this book. It's, I it's do. right here. And I'm sure you'll probably tell people about it. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's a small book, and, I, and I, God told me to write it very small. He said the millennial generation, which is the generation right underneath uh, our generation, he says they have been told about Jesus. Um, they, have a, they have been led by Jesus, but they're not leading like Jesus. Mm. And they don't know the Holy Spirit, which seemingly is the most forgotten part of the Trinity um, so I don't know, and I'm, I'm cautious of, because of this platform and, and the people that are watching, but the last 15 to 20 years, we have seen, uh, we have seen churches explode and become famous and, uh, they're preaching Jesus, which we should preach Jesus. Absolutely. I don't negate that. But the second experience is just as important for us to do the commission and the command that Jesus yeah. gave. Um, he breathed on them, uh, the disciples, they received the Holy Spirit, but then he says, wait for the promise. So you can have the Holy Spirit, but the, the Holy Spirit not have you. And there's a huge difference in that. Phew. I could go on. Oh, and on. my goodness. I, that, I, I, I've, I've known this for a long time. I know a lot of folk that like to use the Holy Spirit as an instrument, but um, that's not how God works. He's going to possess you. And the whole point of the Holy Spirit is to get lost in Him and have Him be within you, the power of God manifesting in your life every day. When Peter, here we have Peter, that a little girl pointing at him one night by a fire causes him to deny and, and, and curse and, and totally separate himself from the Lord Jesus. But all it takes is one encounter with the Holy Ghost and the same man stands up with boldness and a lot of times in the church today, we, we, we've socialized the church. So the church is now, you know, a nice place to go and a nice place to be seen to go and a nice place to hang out. But, and, and the music, what, when I was growing up in Pentecost as a young boy, there was no, there was no d doubt if you were Pentecostal in your worship that, that what you were. And um, you were distinct and by yourself. But what's happened is there's been a, an amalgamation of, of, of the styles of worship. So you can go to a church, um, uh, many of uh, great churches in America that are Methodist and have a morning. Uh, uh, there's one in Montgomery, Alabama that, that we've been ministering there for years. And they, they have a traditional um, Methodist 
service, and then they have a contemporary Methodist service. And the, com the contemporary church is no different than an Assemblies of God church or a charismatic church because we've all learned the form of worship, but we've denied the power thereof. And what we need in the church today is the recognition that unless the Holy Ghost moves in His sovereign way, all we're doing is playing games and playing church and al not allowing him to have his way to transform like um like he wants to you know absolutely you know god spoke to me in 2018 on a new year's eve and he said i'm going to shake the nations philip to set up oh. revival for the nations wow. you know nothing can shake the nations on its own unless god is in it and a lot of people you know covid came with a great price tag. It did. I lost sure. my father um, 14 weeks ago to COVID. Uh, he he, so he had it and died of a heart attack because of complications. 77 year old man, full of God. And so I don't negate that it's not real. It is a mm -hmm. real thing. But the Lord spoke to me at two years prior to that, actually one year and two months prior to that. And he said, I'm going to shake the nations to set wow. up revival for the nation. And a lot of people would say COVID was a plague. I would beg to differ that it's not just a plague. COVID is a purge. Uh, God has purged the church yeah. through this. Uh, um, it's not a mask or no mask kind of uh, faith or no faith. But, you know, we're only seeing 50% of the church come back. Yeah. Um, I, I've talked to pastors all around the nation and they're all saying the same thing. You know, giving is up, but the attendance is down. Um, uh, statistics out there say 33% of the church have made up in their mind they will never come back. Um, and I said, God, what's going on? What are you doing? And he says, remember the word that I gave you. He said, I'm going to shake the nations to set up revival for the nations. And I said, what does that mean? He said, look at my word in the upper room, what we're talking about. He said 500 people showed up wanting, wanting what the promise was, but only 120 stayed. He said, do the math on that. And I did the math on it. And it's 76% left the room before the Holy Spirit could do oh, his finest work. Can, filling. Can, can you imagine being one of those that left? No, I've thought I'm, about that so many times. I've preached, I've preached this so many times. How many folks said, well, listen, look, I, I'm sorry, man. It's been a long time now. We've been sitting here in this room and I got, I got work to do and I got bills to pay and I'm sorry. I, I just got to go. And, and um, my Lord, imagine being one that missed the sovereign wave and the wind of the Holy Ghost and the fire of Pentecost. And I'm, as you said, and, and my goodness, you, you are sparking so many things in my spirit. Nothing. I, I've traveled for 52 years preaching. I've been all over the world preaching the gospel. Never in the history of my lifetime, I don't think ever before, has the whole nations of the earth been shaken. This, right. has, this has impacted every nation on earth. It has it has shaken everything. It's shaken cultures. It's shaken governments. Uh, the, Donald Trump would, would, would be president today if it wasn't for COVID because of the nagging, you know, what have you done? And, and no, one, no one could do anything. I'm British. I'm Scottish by my, my birthright. And I've, I'm very interested in British news. And I'm watching um, Johnson, uh, the, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. He is absolutely being pilloried by the press. You're not doing enough. It's the same in France. It's the same everywhere. It's shaken the uh -huh. nations. But we can either choose to look at this as the disaster of all time, or we can say, hold on a second. Is there a hand behind this getting ready to prepare his people yes. for the move of God? It's interesting that the, t the tithes and the offerings, the funding of the church hasn't gone down, although the numbers have decreased. Would it be that God is cutting away and trimming the vine and saying, listen, it's dead wood anyway. Let's get, if, it's, if, it, if it isn't part of the, the, the branch and the vine of the kingdom, well, let's just move forward to see where we really stand. And from that point, we can change the world. 
But we've got to get back to a, a basis of reality.